Say after me, Father. Shout it, say, Father. Let my portion in life and destiny locate me now. Go ahead and pray. Let my portion. God is a God of portions. Please open your mouth and pray. Let my portion, that allotment for me in life and destiny, extend that prayer to your children. Let my portion in life, let my portion in destiny locate me. Let my portion in life, my portion in destiny locate me. Someone pray. In your prayer is your miracle. In your prayer is your miracle. Let my portion. Let my portion locate me by the spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. God is a God of portions. That means it is never God's idea for you to be a slave under someone forever. You can start and learn, but eventually God gives you your space. It's called Rehoboth. God has given us. And this also means territorial establishment. Are we together now? Yes. For a time period, you are allowed to stay in a place that is not your own, but with time when the God of portion visits you. This is what happened to Jacob. Jacob was in the house of Laban. He was not supposed to be forever, but Laban used divination and found out that Joseph had been, that um, Jacob, it was because of Jacob's presence, he was increasing and he refused to let Jacob go. Change wives, did all change his wages and kept that man for over 20 years. Anybody coming in the spirit of Laban to not allow you have your space in life and destiny, stopping that word Rehoboth from becoming your reality. You dig a well and the Philistines come to cover it. You dig a well and they come to cover it. May my God give you your space. In life, in destiny, in your home, in your business. I say it again, the God of portions. May he give you your own space. Do you believe this prayer? Now look at me please. When Jesus was about to have what we call the triumphant entry, the Bible tells us that he sent his disciples. He said, go to a street whose roads divide. Watch this. You will see a colt tied there that no man, including the owner, had ridden on. There are people who are caretakers of certain things. It is not for them. It was supposed to pass through them. But the spirit of Laban says it will not pass. It will remain. I pray for you. Parakos kiataba. Anyone carrying any colt, that you should use for your triumphant entry. Triumphant entry in business, in marriage, in family, in ministry, and is refusing to allow that call get to you. I pray for you. May it be released now. May it be released now. Go to a street, whose, a road whose streets divide, and you will see a cold. There are monies God gave men that is not for them. He made them prosper unusually in the business, not because of their transactional prowess. He knew that somebody, there are people today who have built properties, they don't know why. That property is not just claiming people's things. This is not what I'm saying. Listen, please look up. Let me teach you something. There are two ways God blesses people. He blesses people by making you Abraham or he blesses you by making you Lot. Are we together? Not everyone will receive the mandate directly from God, but everyone can be the partaker of the mandate. If you are Lot and you are trying to prosper by being Abraham, you will die hungry. God called Abraham, but Lot said, I can still partake of it. Are we together now? So you need to know whether you are Abraham or Lot. If you are Abraham, your mandate is to be faithful with what you have received because there is a Lot who is at the mercy of your obedience. If you are Lot, you must discern so that you do not break the relationship with Abraham because your prosperity is tied to your discernment. 
the first decision Lot took outside of Abraham's influence landed him in Sodom and Gomorrah. That means his prosperity was not a function of his wisdom. He was under a grace of Abraham. Hear what I'm telling you. There are many of you who, if God is to allow you learn all the business principles by yourself and start prospering, it may be till 20, 30 before you prosper. But he brings you after the order of Lot. It is one of the ways he redeems time by giving men favor. Because it takes time to learn the genuine secrets that produce lasting wealth. And the truth is that there are people who have gotten born again late. Before they now begin to learn these principles. A woman of 70 years, where is she going to learn 25 principles for prosperity? She's made the mistake she did not maximize destiny. But is God still a God of mercy? So God will bring Abraham to her. And she needs to have the wisdom of Lot. If you are Abraham, I am telling you, be faithful in hearing God. Because Lot, there are many Lots that are depending on your obedience. But if you are Lot, swallow your pride and honor Abraham. Because if you fight with Abraham, that is the end of your prosperity. The same Abraham that fought with Lot was the one who had to come and save Lot. And even in doing that, he lost his wife. You know what it means to lose your wife? The basis for your productivity. Pharaoh said, let the men go, but the women and children should remain. That means the men would die of old age, of natural cause, and there would not be transgenerational, there would not be continuity. Are we together? Please listen to what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you prophetically. There are some of you right now, by the mercy of God, and because of the covenant God had with your parents, instead of taking 10 years to start learning the principles, the truth is that time has gone. You already have five children. Before you learn all the rudiments, so what God does as an act of his mercy is he will let you hear when he's speaking to Abraham. As Abraham moves, you come as Lot provided you can be faithful a day will come you will not even know who god spoke to and who god or who is following the mistake do you know the trouble between abraham and lord started from their men not them their men train the people around you to know why the anointing is in your life so that they do not you don't lose the anointing and lose favor i don't know why the spirit of god is speaking this through me i'm speaking to the entire globe listen to me there are people right now the reason why you will lose favor is because of your children you have not taught your children that the church god planted you in is the reason why god is honoring them and you are watching them dishonor the vessel that god is using to lift you learn from lot remember lot's wife but remember lot too two of them have a story to tell are we together now know when you are abraham and know when you are lot not everybody will be abraham you can look onto abraham but not everybody will be abraham there are people today god has granted them an unusual grace they can sit down where they are every year they can have opportunity to give up to 30 people jobs and because of your relationship with them out of those 30 slots they will give you three three every year make sure you don't fight this kind of people because the day that happens that it will be the day your child now just graduates from school and is ready for a job and that door is closed i pray for someone whatever has taken you away from the blessing of abraham as lot may my god who is your god bring restoration may my god who is your god bring restoration and if you are abraham i'm praying for you the grace to stay until what God says manifest. May it happen for you. May that grace rest on you. So that all the lots connected to you will not wait in vain because of your disobedience. And Lot went with him. That was the wisest thing Lot did. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. When it was time for God to help the Ethiopian eunuch, he encouraged the servant Philip. He said, join this chariot for the sake of the man.
join this chariot. If you leave this man alone, confusion will kill him. If you leave this man alone, he will never be saved. Join this chariot. Can I tell you, beware of the people God brings in your life. There are destructive people I taught you, but there are people who are gifts. When you see other people joining your chariot, discern. If it's God that has sent them there, respect their presence. It's not idleness that brought them. God send them to your chariot so that you will understand the interpretation of what you are reading. You have opened the book of your destiny, but you cannot understand it. So God sends them to join the chariot. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I pray for the sick now? Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Believe. Do you know, Reverend Sam? I got to find out that there are four. I've discerned that there are four diseases that the devil is bringing to destroy people in the body of Christ. It didn't used to be an issue, but it, the church seems to be keeping quiet over it. And if we do not arise and pray, number one is called cancer. Cancer. Thank God for the research that is being done in medicine. But we need to pray and upgrade our levels of graces so that we can bring to end this, this demonic thing that is killing people. I know many people, sadly, who have died in the last two or three months because of this satanic thing. One time, I think it was a, some, maybe it's a few months ago, I was praying for people and then this beautiful young lady, seven years, this little girl, swollen by that devilish thing. You would think it is old people, but now seven years, what did the girl do? Satan for you. Cancer. Cancer. Number two that I want us to pray for is Satan is beginning to creep and he's fighting the next generation in the church and he's using the tool of infertility let me tell you the truth I'm not a doctor but there are many people who are all right it is because of the coming of John that Elizabeth is suffering it has nothing to do with Elizabeth even though later we know that it is God's plan so that John will come just shortly after Jesus and not be discouraged but all the same infertility you will see somebody who is all right wife all right are we together or she would take in and then here comes this demonic satanic familiar spirit an encounter and we think it does not matter i don't want to you see territorial advancement and preserving the purposes of god is transgenerational every time satan begins to fight continuity there is a goal there is an agenda i speak in parables it's important for you to be discerning the next 10 years with this onslaught of infertility on the church is going to deplete the strength of believers to a point where we will go back to Egypt and become slaves. This thing is a strategy and we must pray. Number three, every madman Jesus saw in the Bible, he healed the person. There was one sickness Jesus did not tolerate. There were other sicknesses, some were healed, but madness was not one of it. To the point that Jesus crossed over to heal one person and return back, a madman in Gadara. This thing called mental health. It's creeping gradually in Nigeria, it's not too much. But in Europe, America, you see children and they tell you mental health. Someone can pick a, a, a knife, kill himself, kill the mother, and begin to act. I mean, the stress that families, especially in Europe and US, are going through because of mental health. You have four children, and three of them are almost like madmen. You literally leave your destiny and you are focused at managing them. Every time you see distraction away from purpose, it is Satan's strategy. When the nation of Israel were serving the Lord, he said it is because they have straw. Stop giving them straw. So that they will be busy looking for straw and they will not have the time to serve the Lord. This is number three. Are we together now? This is very important. The fourth one is not sickness per se like health, but is the spirit of lack 
and poverty and Satan is using the strategy of borrowing for as long as I am alive I will never watch the church of God go down economically it doesn't matter what people say or do not say it is part of the mandate to help God's people with dignity and integrity correct the errors that are around the whole teaching on wealth that brings materialism but to help God's people for God's sake to be empowered if an unbeliever is the one training your child because of luck that child will serve the God of that unbeliever there is only one reason hear me believers why Egypt goes to I used to say one but I found two reasons now there is one there are two reasons why Israel goes to Egypt number one is to learn wisdom and knowledge number two is hunger are we together Genesis 42 1 and 2 there was hunger and Jacob spoke to his sons he saw that there was corn but the location was wrong there was supply he saw that there was money but the man who has that money is a cultist but I am hungry and my husband has five children my husband has six children and the cultist is saying come you will work with me you will bow to my God and you will earn a salary of 200,000 and church people are saying don't worry God is faithful love him anyhow and the person is getting into trouble give us verse 1 media verse 1 Genesis 42 1 and now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt he said to his sons why do you look upon one another verse 2 I have heard that there is corn the only problem is that the location is not a good place get thee down theater and buy for us yes I know that the man sacrifices people but just go we are hungry I know that the money the man wants to give me as a man of God is blood money but what will I do if I don't collect it the church will not be built I know that you are not caught you still bring it the church needs to be empowered it has become a disease this thing called poverty for as long as I'm alive and for as long as God gives me the privilege of leadership over this ministry I have vowed before God and is my covenant to you that among many things that you must carry in this destiny is the grace to live a life of dignity and honor you believe that shout amen, amen. I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant at the expense of their economic empowerment I'm committed to bringing the whole counsel of God among the five benefits of God is that he satisfied your mouth with good things so that your days are renewed your youth is renewed let's pray for the sick now you deserve the glory please lay your hands and the honor Lord I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hands in worship, as we bless your holy name, for you are great. to pray for you you came here with someone who is sick you can lay hands on that person and we're honored to have I will always bless God for all the hospitals and the clinics that literally put these teachings during the miracle services for their patients there are literally clinics right now who are allowing either on screen or people using phones for their patients it's such an honor to be able to bring the healing power of Jesus to these places if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and I want you to believe in a healing Jesus remember part of the things available in this feast is his power to heal 
the Bible says the power of God was present to heal them but he only ended up healing one person I want to pray for you now believe believe only believe when I pray for you I'm going to give you instructions to check yourself when I say check yourself do it that if your neck could not move don't be afraid your feet could not move don't be afraid you came here with a walking aid don't be afraid your hands are unable to be lifted don't be afraid I will pray for you and let's see what God does tonight within the time that we have are you ready let's pray father in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we are here because we are believers we believe in the cross we believe in the blood of the eternal covenant that has brought eternal atonement for sin for sickness and Lord we pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm ministering to your people and to the nations many who are trusting God for all kinds of miracles in their bodies many of them holding death sentences this moment as medical reports many of them like the woman with the issue of blood they have spent their earnings they have spent their means of livelihood they have lost jobs because of ill health they've had many parts of their bodies deadened and weakened i'm praying right now oh god that you honor every word that comes from the lips of your servant therefore i pray every spirit my god that is the at the back of any disease any infirmity any health or mental distress i command that spirit to give way now i command that spirit to give way now in the name of jesus the son of the living god right now be healed i stretch my hands and i decree and declare your internal organs be healed now your heart be healed now brain tumors disappear now the Lord is showing me someone you have a swelling at the back of your eye this is inside but it is affecting you in the name of Jesus the power of God is healing you right now there's someone you have it is not a thyroid I don't know if it's a thyroid problem it's like goiter but um, it's inside just inside within your neck and you are having a severe discomfort it's like some kind of ulcer some injury inside you feel the pain the power of God is touching you right now every heart problem be healed now Someone is going to shout loud right now under the anointing. In the name of Jesus. God is correcting something in the body of that person. This is what I'm seeing. Every liver problem be healed now. Every damaged kidney jack back to life now. I saw this same case that I want to mention now when I was ministering at yesterday in Asaba I think it was yesterday either Asaba or Lagos I can't remember which there's someone you have a problem going to ease yourself to urinate it's like it's like you cannot pass urine freely I don't know what the name of the sickness is but it just comes in droplets you're not able and it's, it has severe pain this is what I'm seeing in the name of Jesus the power of God is resting on you now There's someone you are having severe ulcer severe ulcer there are wounds inside you and and I mean it you're going through all kinds of excruciating pain I decree and declare be healed now I'm seeing someone the Lord is showing me something is a very interesting thing I'm seeing you go, you are going through severe pain almost like stomach cramps but this happens all the time always literally you cannot lie down I'm seeing you having to hold a pillow and just to lie on it in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is touching you right now now every bone condition 
bone conditions you are not able to walk you are not able to lift up your hands in Jesus name be healed now if you came with a neck collar or some bracelet around your neck or around your joints I decree and declare may the power of God touch you be healed now be healed now brain damage be healed now in the name of Jesus sleep apnea be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ there's a disease called insomnia in the name of Jesus be healed now the Lord a miracle has happened there look at this bring her out we're still praying bring her out a miracle has happened there Jesus in the name of Jesus she's removed her neck collar give Jesus praise look at this look at this don't be distracted we're still praying check them and make sure that let's pray we're still praying in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm praying for someone I don't know what problem you are having around your rib, your, your um, what they call it now, um, your ribs. You feel severe pain. You are a sickler. This person, you are a sickler. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. Now, um, please don't be embarrassed by the case I'm calling. There is someone, I'm seeing the Lord heal you. You are a lady. This is not just you lactating. What is coming out is not breast milk. This is something that is dangerous. I will not say more than that. But you are having a very serious situation. You need help right now. Because with what I'm seeing, that thing is degenerating. And it's almost something that we don't want to say anything negative. But in the name of Jesus, whoever that person is, let the power of God touch you right where you are. Every shoulder pain be healed now. You came here with any walking aid and you could not walk. You are not able to move your legs. I decree and declare that you begin to walk now. I decree and declare that you begin to walk now. Let life and strength surge to your body right now. In the name of Jesus. And seeing someone, you could not lift your hands just as I'm lifting it now. But in the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. Now, whether I mention your case or not, for sake of time, be healed now. Outside, be healed now. All the other overflows, be healed now. Online, be healed now. I want you to check yourself now. Begin to do what you could not do. Begin to do what you could not do. There are miracles happening. The moment you 